Hello Minions, Wheezy here, and this video is showing gameplay of Call of Duty World War II because we're going to talk about Call of Duty 2021, which rumor has it is going to be Call of Duty World War II Vanguard, made by Sledgehammer, the same development studio that created this Call of Duty World War II, which implies that it's going to be a direct sequel to this game, so I figured, yay, yeah, it was pertinent to put this up. I literally never played Call of Duty World War II when it came out. Uh, a while ago, it became one of the free games on uh, PSN for PlayStation Plus members, so I added it to my library, but literally never downloaded it or installed it. So when I heard that the 2021 Call of Duty game was most likely going to be World War II, and almost certainly the direct sequel to this game, I figured, hey, let's throw it on, jump into some multiplayer, and, uh, and talk about it. So uh, the first thing that I will say is that I was surprised at how basically clean and relatively enjoyable the gameplay was in this. I'm not a fan, those of you who've been around a while, I'm not a huge fan of World War II games, really old uh, shooter games, just because kind of like a like a racing game like Forza right like if in Forza you could only race cars from the 1940s that would really suck <laughs> for me you know there are some people who are maybe classic car enthusiasts they would love that I'm a bit of a gun guy so when I play a shooter game I want to play with a large variety of cool and modern weapons um, so Older games don't really do it for me. Like a new game having an old weapon in it, like back in COD 4 when they had the MP44 in COD 4 is like a throwback to, you know, the World War II pedigree of the Call of Duty series. Like that was kind of cool, but I could still grab an M4 or a G36. Um, so that's kind of my general opposition <laughs> to older games like World War II games especially and, you know, Battlefield 1 is a World War 1 game, you know, even worse <laughs> going back, but... Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's let's talk about kind of thoughts about what's going on with uh, the the return to World War II. So what I've heard is that essentially because one of the studios basically with the with the lockdowns and all that stuff, development has been kind of crazy. The, the world's most low flying bombers. This would never happen anyway. Um, <laughs> the uh, with the lockdowns and everything, people working from home. It's been obviously a difficult development situation for people. Um, so what I heard was essentially for 2021, because they had to pull, I think it was Raven Studios off to help Treyarch get Cold War out the door, um, and they were supposed to be getting their own game out this year, uh, Activision essentially went to Infinity Ward and Sledgehammer and basically just said, whichever one of you can get a game out this year is going to get your game out this year. So it sounded like Sledgehammer was closer to getting theirs done, most likely because they started their development cycle after this World War II game ended. Um, and Infinity Ward obviously coming off of Call of Duty 2019, uh, the Modern Warfare, which I still believe is the best Call of Duty in the series. Uh, I still love that game to this day. Um, so in that sense, I'm really glad that they're letting Infinity Ward have you know, another year before that. And I'm excited because that does imply that 2022 will be a potentially a sequel to Modern Warfare since Modern Warfare is basically kind of like a a, a prequel slash soft reboot sort of um, I'm excited that potentially Infinity Ward's developing just an iteration that's going to take Modern Warfare uh, but you know improve it with some next gen technology so I'm looking forward to 2022 2021 and a World War Two Call of Duty game I'm not super excited about and I would I'm not even sure at this point there's no information it's not even completely confirmed that this is what's gonna happen but <laughs> let's say that this is a reasonable uh, leak which I think it sounds like it is uh, the all of the context makes perfect sense with the the lockdowns and the development delays and sledgehammer going ahead and developing a sequel to their you know already World War two game that they've released um, seems plausible so let's say that that's what happens in call of duty this year is a world war ii game after battlefield 5 two years ago you know has is a uh, is a world war ii game battlefield 1 before that a world war one game and black ops cold war is you know obviously not a world war ii game but still a past setting so 
a lot of these shooters went way into the went from modern into the future now they went back to the past like I'm kind of I'm kind of over the past stuff that's part of a big part of why I haven't really now that contributed to my absence from the channel for these past few years as well because there was this you know lack of modern shooters after Battlefield 4 essentially so um, that said I mean might be too early just to just go ahead and condemn this game and say well just because it's World War 2 I won't get it I did end up buying Battlefield 5 just because I you know it was a new Battlefield game and I wasn't impressed by Battlefield 1 so I figured hey Battlefield 5 might be better it turns out it wasn't <laughs> like at least I mean I guess I think overall Battlefield 5 is better than Battlefield 1 uh, but it did not keep me interested. That's for sure. I, I, you know, I got to what did I get to like rank 18 in Battlefield One, and I got to like rank 30 in Battlefield Five, and in Battlefield Three and Battlefield Four, I spent literally hundreds of hours in each one of those games. Um, just to give you some context of how much time I will spend in a shooter if I like it. Modern Warfare, I ranked up every single weapon. I played. You know, probably, I haven't checked my official stats on that, but probably a hundred or, well, probably hundreds of hours in Modern Warfare as well. Uh, Cold War will probably not reach that threshold, uh, just because it's not keeping my interest. So, that said, even if I do get another Call of if I do, if it is World War II Call of Duty this year, if I even get it, I doubt I'll play it much, especially when you factor in that it is almost certain that. Well, actually, the, the leaks now seem that it's pretty certain. All we're waiting for is the official reveal, but Battlefield 6, which is most likely just going to be called Battlefield, is going to come out this year and be in a modern slash near future setting, so like 10 years from today, meaning that they can use current and uh, currently in development weaponry, and... Uh, it's most likely also going to be uh, getting a standalone battle royale, you know, because that's the thing these days. Um, that will most likely be free to play unless EA just is absolutely retarded, um, which they can be, but they also love money, and they, 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 they are currently the publishers behind Apex Legends, and that thing has been so successful for them, I can't imagine them not letting Battlefield put out a standalone free to play. Um, game because it will be it will not be a competitor to Apex Legends because Apex is so you know stylized and arcadey and and Battlefield is very much not that so it's not like they even have a uh, financial incentive not to compete with themselves in the battle royale space because completely different audiences I have I have literally not touched Apex Legends even though it's free and even though it's from essentially the people that developed uh, Call of Duty 4 you know that whole thing with them leaving Infinity Ward and starting Respawn Entertainment and I, I'm pretty sure I'm not I'm not positive but I'm pretty sure that's the team responsible for Apex as I call in this artillery barrage thing that I didn't know how it worked um, again I, I mean that's advanced technology a self-guiding artillery shell in World War II that didn't happen <laughs> anyway so yeah I mean it's an it's I get that they're just trying to get another game out and I don't here's what's gonna be really interesting because Warzone is really popular right now the, the the idea the rumor the theory is is that in Cold War season 3 the Warzone map is going to swap over to essentially a conglomeration of the dirty bomb slash outbreak zombies uh, Cold War maps into a war, new Warzone map that's going to replace the current you know, modern warfare war zone map, which I think is probably a good idea. It's probably overdue. Um, and obviously, the Cold War weapons have already been rolled into Warzone, so it's most likely since Call of Duty has become a unified experience and ranking persists across games, that probably this new World War, potentially World War II Call of Duty, will also become the um, the the replacement War Zone. So we're gonna and. I don't think they're necessarily planning on, on vaulting any weapons in Warzone just because people pay real money for these weapons and for the skins and stuff like that. So does that mean that Warzone 2022, let's call it, because it'll probably be into the year, the, the 2022 year before they fully transition Warzone over into the new Call of Duty's ecosystem, but probably late 2021 when they roll the weapons in. Warzone is going to be potentially at the end of 2021 taking place in Cold War 
Warzone maps with weapons from Modern Warfare, Cold War, and potentially World War II. That's gonna... I don't... Things are gonna get really interesting right now. I mean, I get that they've got this kind of larger roadmap and this idea of making Warzone persistent, which is super successful right now. Warzone is amazingly successful. Um, I'll take a quick break to point out that my first game ever of World War II, we lost, but I led my team and was second in the game, 22-6. and six. Uh, Stay tuned to, for more episodes of Wheezy's War College if you want to be able to jump into shooters with absolutely no knowledge of the game and, and do well. <laughs> Sponsored by me. Um, so yeah, it's going to be an interesting thing for Warzone too. I've been, I've been in the back of my mind soft planning for when the season three uh, kickoff of Warzone starts that I might jump into Warzone some more. I've basically not played a single match of Warzone since, I mean, I don't know necessarily the timeline, since before they changed the Gulag, just to give you an idea. I've literally never played a game of Warzone. I've never been in the new Gulag. Um, so, so I'm thinking about just, you know, jumping back into Warzone just because it's built on the... Uh, in the modern warfare engine, you can tell that Warzone plays very differently from Cold War, and I'm 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 hoping, I'm praying that when they roll out the Cold War map for Warzone, that they don't change the engine. I can't imagine that they would, just because it's a standalone right now. But Warzone plays like modern warfare, not like Cold War, which is a good thing, and. I hope that continues because <laughs> I like the modern warfare engine. Uh, it's just, it just, the the weapons, the the feel of the game is just so fantastic. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how all of that goes and how it competes with potentially a resurgence in Battlefield. The Battlefield community is desperate for a modern bat Battlefield game. I know I am like. There may be some people out there in the Battlefield community that I'm not as aware of who are like just all about Battlefield 1, Battlefield 5. They're like, oh man, I love these classic, you know, World War II games and stuff like that. But I feel like, man, back in the Medal of Honor days, like when every shooter was a World War II shooter, I feel like when COD 4 came out, it was this this great relief to everyone in the video game community of just like, thank God, finally a mainstream modern shooter that we can really dig into we everyone was world war ii fatigue and i don't think that has really gotten better for two reasons one those of us who are old and have been around for those many years i mean we're talking 15 20 years now um me personally, I have not gotten over that World War II fatigue. I still get a little PTSD every time I hear a grand clip go ping, <laughs> just because that's all we had for so long. You know, Medal of Honor, Allied Assault, and just, oh man, the early Call of Duty games all the way through COD 3, like, I, 20 years later, I feel like we have, like, the, the old ones in the room have not gotten over the, the World War II fatigue. Um, and it's not like we were ever really, like, a generation of World War II players. Obviously, that was far before us as well. But that said, the further complicating factor is all these modern gamers, right? The the younger of you, you know, that you guys out there that aren't, you know, 30 yet, you that are in your teens and 20s, probably aren't super interested in World War II because if you're anything like my kids, it's gotten to the point where World War II is just kind of this thing you learn about in school for a little bit, but you don't learn a whole lot about. It's just not as big a deal in the modern day to you know to hear all about the greatest generation in world war ii like when i was growing up you know world war ii was like all of the heroes like you know band of brothers and and it just became really kind of popular in culture schindler's list like world war ii was all about you know everything the culture was all about world war ii vietnam was very much the uh you know the the war that everybody hated and that got really shit on so you you know you had like the the vietnam uh expansion to, to battlefield 2 which was fun but vietnam never really you know got the the reputation of being the war of heroes right it was kind of the dirty ugly corrupt war um rightfully so although i don't necessarily think world war 2 deserves a pass in that department either but that said 
all of that is kind of lost on the newer generation. So like they just they just they haven't been raised on all of this World War II uh, hype and jive, right? They have been raised on the indoctrination of the Middle East soldier of of American soldiers going across the world and killing brown people as being the new heroic thing. So that's uh, obviously just like Vietnam and World War II, still not a great thing to be to be doing. But as far as creating an environment where people are interested in a setting or a an environment or something to play i think the the modern setting the the you know 1990s or 2000s and more recent um you know war on terror is is where the the current generation's mind is kind of living so i don't think world war one world war two throwbacks are going to be that popular um Especially when a major series, you know, it's on a battlefield. You can we can argue about uh, whether or not the 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 issues with Battlefield One and Battlefield Five were entirely around mismanagement and poor design choices and woke trailers and bad software as a service. I think the biggest. I think people would have dealt with all of that if they had enjoyed the gameplay in the setting. There's something about slapping red dot sights on world war one and world war two weapons that just doesn't feel good and all the weapons from that era you know on older age you know manufacturing has changed they're all just ugly and primitive and it, there's just a lot of brown and ugly in world war one world war two and, and the modern setting gives you a lot more a lot more variety i mean the variety of weapons over the past you know 40 50 years has just absolutely exploded you know you've got m4s m16s the old xm8s popping out like the you know the old uh what when like the masako was a thing but then it became the acr and you've got g36s and you've got g3s i mean there's just so much now to choose from and the battlefield 3 and battlefield 4 games and even the call of duty games cod 4 well maybe cod 4 a little bit but um, the more recent COD games, like especially Modern Warfare, just had a plethora of modern weapons to choose from. So going back feels like going back. It feels like such a step back. So lost that game again. I led the team again. Level four, my first two games ever in World War II. So let me know what you guys think. I've babbled on about my thoughts on World War II. Maybe you guys are excited about a World War II game. Did you guys just love Call of Duty World War II? Like, are you ready for the sequel? Have you been looking forward to this? Like, I'm looking forward to the sequel of Modern Warfare. Let me know if you guys liked this video and liked hearing me run my mouth. Leave me a like. If you hate me talking, leave me a dislike so I can cry myself to sleep tonight. Subscribe to become a minion, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Goodbye.